Come back to the table now. Come. You as well. What do you want to do with that now? Let Pam. Let Pam go first. She always goes first. Have you considered, have you done a study about the businesses there and now that uh, the business owners and the staff are going to have to pay, it's going to come out of their salaries, even the part-time staff, that they're going to now have to pay to be there four or five hours or a day, that's going to come out of their salaries. Have you given any consideration to that at all? Can I, can I just say directly, yeah, I mean, Denise can answer as well. Uh, the fact of the matter, yes, we have given that consideration. Uh, parking charges right across Hartlepool come out of people's salaries or businesses, depending on which permit area that they're in. Uh, so, at the end of the day, it's exactly the same at Seaton Carew. We do appreciate the fact that at the moment they don't pay anything. Yeah, and, uh, and I think we appreciate it. We appreciate that they don't pay anything at all at the moment for car parking and that this is a change, but other businesses do pay and are paying and staff who work in those businesses do pay and are paying. Okay, Denise, do you want to respond? Yeah. Um, I, I, I fully understand what you're saying. Um, Pam, is it? Is yeah. It, um, I wouldn't like the other day, don't you? Um, the businesses, what we're actually proposing is free parking bays for the businesses for the staff to use during this trial period so that they won't have to pay anything, then we'll do the evaluation at the end of it. And if the evaluation becomes a permanent thing, then obviously we would have, they, they would have to pay alongside you do as any other business or any other organisation or business in the town. Yeah, with respect, I, I don't think there's any single one of us that believes this is going to be a temporary measure once it's in, it's in. And I'll, have you got an exit plan? Let's say after the seven months, it's an absolute disaster. Businesses are closing all across Seaton. How much is it going to cost for you to revert Seaton the way it was? Have you even considered that? Can I, can I just say that you're asking, the answers to those questions are actually in the report. We've actually said that it, it will be done on a, a, an experimental order that covers seven months from the 1st of April to the 31st of October. During and after that period, and taking into account the representations that have already been made through one mechanism or another, we will come to a conclusion that will come back to our committee here, it will be discussed in the autumn, and we will make a decision as to whether things need to be changed, whether they need to be relaxed, whether they need to be spread wider, whether they need to be removed altogether. Uh, those decisions will be made, but they will be made not on an assumption that business, businesses will close all over the season, or that residents won't like it because they'll have to pay a small amount of money, or that there are problems. Nobody, neither you nor I, know what the impact will be. But how well, it cost of how much it is to remove it? Yes, that, that will be dealt with at the time that the report comes. And yes, there is a fair guesstimate at the moment of what that might cost. But what I'm saying to you is no one, neither you nor I, or anyone else sat in this room, knows at this moment in time which streets will benefit, which streets won't, which streets will need to be able to have it, how much the car parking may or may not make a difference. No one knows that, which is why over that seven month trial period, consultation will happen with residents and businesses and any other interested parties. And we will discuss those things face to face over that period of time. And at the end of that period, there will be a full review that will come back to the committee. Just in addition, what the businesses were saying was don't remove the free drop-off zone because you get a lot of past It's the chip shops and stuff like that and you get those trades, you get... I, I, we're actually extending that. We're extending that, taking on board their comments. We do meet with the businesses, we have very special groups for the businesses, so we are consulting with them. Yeah, because you, you'll easily wait over 30 minutes to get into uh, the fish and chip shops at sea, mm -hmm. that's for certain. Well, let, let me ask you this. There's very few things families in Hartlepool can do for free. So under your scheme, can a family, not very well off, but they've got a little car, they'll get themselves some sandwiches and some drinks, 
can they then go down to Seaton, park their car, and have a nice free day on the beach under your skin? Not for all day, no. Right. So that's a fake. If you're including the car. No, I don't see it that. It is. Because you know, I, I really it. don't want to get into an argument <coughs> well, on, on this issue. At the end of the day, the charges are minimal. They meet the targets that where it's necessary, so they're not a blanket of seat and peru. Uh, they are targeted on the seafront in the main. And at the end of the day, those car parks do cost money to be maintained. At the moment, they make no contribution to those costs. And so the beach is free. And I think that the bit of Hartley Pool that is not being taken into account at all is that there are still a large number of residents from Hartley Pool in particular that go to see the Karoon by bus. Yes, they sir. pay bus fares. They pay bus fares. So they're not being taken into account here at all. Yes, but once they get there on the bus, they're not going to be saying, how long have we got? How long have we got? Who's got some change? Let's go feed the meter or pound whatever. Pound for two hours, £1.50 for up to four, and two pounds for all day is, in my view, comparable actually with a bus fare. In fact, it's probably less than a bus fare. Uh, you know, it's, it's cost and value and the price of freedom at the end of the day. And I just hope it's reflected in the ballot box. Well, so do I. <coughs> right. Mr. Goodenham. Thank you. Well, I've got some good news for you. And that is. The survey that we're talking about carrying out at the end of this uh, seven month trial, we've already done. And we've got 3,500 people who say it's a bad idea and they don't want it. So, can the council tell me that at this stage they choose to totally disregard the wishes of 3,500 members of the electorate? We haven't said that. We said that we will take that into account along with all of the representations that have come in. And at the moment, as I've already said, there is no one in this room that knows, hand on heart, what the outcome will be at the end of the seven months, because the seven months have not yet taken place. Do you really believe that increasing the cost to visit Seaton Karoo is going to grow the business? Since time immemorial, every time a tax rate or a levy is imposed, revenues fall. Yes, Hartley Paul Borough Council may be generating additional revenues for a short period of time, but overall, this will impact the businesses. I've been down to Seaton Carew, and I've talked to every single business owner. Not one of them, not one of them, think this is a good idea. And if the council truly represents the electorate, then they should listen to the three and a half thousand voices. Some of them signed on fish and chip paper, for goodness sake, because we ran out of petition forms. That's for strength of feeling. Let me just take you to another book, an interesting point. In 1770, income tax was introduced as a temporary measure to fund the Napoleonic War. We're still paying it. I guarantee, in fact, I would bet my mortgage on the fact that, come the seven months, this will continue. And I'll tell you for why. Because you do not have a plan. You've costed out a plan for putting it in, for the yellow lines, for the wardens, for the equipment, everything. You have not costed in what it's going to take to take all those out. If you were serious about this being a seven month trial, those costs will be detailed in your proposal. They are not. So I would ask the council, before you even go any further with this, at the very least you delay the introduction until you have a fully costed proposal for removing the equipment. I have three comments. Councillor Skinner. Uh, Springer. <coughs> Do you want to come to the table? Do you want to replace Mr. Woodrow and come to the table? Let's get another little talk space. I think we turn that microphone off so that the other one will come. Councillor Springer. I, I realise that there's a cost involved in putting all this scheme together and looking after the car parks generally. But I, I'm, I'm a little bit... I'd, I'd like to ask a simple question. Have you done this 
just to raise some funds for Strat Harpool Council. No. Can I finish, please? <coughs> Have you done this just to, to raise funds for Harpool Strat Harpool Council, or are you just are you genuinely thinking about the welfare and the business and all that goes on that people go to uh, Seaton Carew for? Have you really thought is this is this your motive or is it finance? <coughs> Can you be, please be honest? I'd like to ask um, uh, Denise this question, please. Um, <coughs> Paul was um, initially uh, part as part of a regeneration program. What we're actually looking at for Seaton Carew, um, we have uh, two groups called Coastal Communities, and those reports go to Regeneration Committee. Um, it would be wrong of me to say that um, finances aren't involved in this. You know the position that the council's in. We've got to find 20.8 million pounds over three years. However, what we have done, um, the car parking budget um, doesn't achieve its target that it currently does, and the details of which are in the report. So what we've done is we've been fair across the town. We're not targeting one specific area, and we've also taken on board the regeneration ambitions for Seaton. Um, in um, response to the points raised about um, removing um, equipment if the uh, experimental order proves not to become permanent, the details are included in the report and the equipment will be reused across the town as replacement. We'll install those equipment and actually reuse it. So the details are listed in the other finances of the project. Yes. Um, Councillor Hamilton. Well, I hear what you say, Denise, and I really feel very reluctant to vote for this. It's a, it's a, reasonably, a reasonable charge, actually, but it's just that Sea Crew isn't blessed, I don't think, with the numbers of people that we get here in Middleton Grange, which might justify perhaps why we do it there. But the people I feel in Sea Crew, uh, uh, sorry, the businesses and the all. So it's not enough to generate enough money to make any difference, much difference, to the council. It would be better that we scrap, not bother with this, and, and let the people have it free. Quite right. Yeah. 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 Can I just respond, George, to the question yes. that you initially asked? Okay. Right. The, the fact of the matter is that shops in Murray Street all pay parking permit charges. Uh, they are no more footfall than at Seaton, probably they get less, but they pay permit charges. Uh, their staff pay for car parking charges, or they have permits through their business, uh, which are chargeable against their business, and therefore, in some cases, the tax man makes a contribution to that. Um, so, it's not all uphill for businesses. The intention running alongside the regeneration of Stephen Peru is that the place needs to be clean, <coughs> it needs to be manageable, and it needs to be safe. Now at the moment, uh, and if you go to Stephen Peru, and I do, you will regularly see cars parked on the chevrons in the centre of the road. You'll see cars parked on the pavements at both sides, and you'll see cars also parked in the 20 minute zone uh, as a free car parking arrangement. That means that as a person trying to cross that road, elderly, infirm, in a wheelchair, pushing a pram, actually has to pass three vehicles and sometimes four before they can safely traverse that road from pavement to pavement. That can't continue, has to be dealt with. There's regularly issues around dog fouling on the front even though there is a no dogs on the beach for the same sort of period of time each year, we need to be able to send enforcement officers into Cedar Peru. Now, at the moment, those officers spend their time dealing with those areas of Hartlepool that are either in permit zones or the car parks in the town centre. By introducing this program, it means that a presence will be available in Cedar Peru. And it won't just be a five or six day working week, It'll be actually a seven day working week. The permits arrangements for resident zones were extended last year when we have made them the same across the town without the subsidy in the town centre. And they were extended from eight to eight because some residents actually said at that time, and the committee took note of it, that uh, if, you live out, if you work outside of Hartlepool and you come home after six, the street, the space had already gone. So it was extended to eight o'clock. 
So staff will be working those hours in order to be able to enforce at Seaton Peru. Because at the end of the day, we do want people as tourists to come to Seaton Peru. We do want businesses to come to Seaton Peru. They won't come if the place is not safe across the road, and they won't come if it's littered or dog foul. So all of those things need to be dealt with. And to be fair, in the round, I think that this program actually brings in the availability of all of that. And therefore, again, in the round, I believe it does benefit seeing Peru. Mm -hmm. no. Councillor Hunter, you will indicate to speak. Uh, yeah. Can I just ask, who else wants to speak on this issue? Right. right, because can you actually go back and sit down so that, because I need to know whether you are residents of Seaton, whether you're businesses of Seaton, or what the interest is, because I can't have four or five speakers on the same I'm issue. I'm a business, so I would like to just use my, my consent. Okay. And uh, can I just comment, <coughs> Pam, you said you hoped it was shown in the ballot box. Yeah. And I'll just, just remind everyone in the room, there are no Seaton councillors present of any political persuasion. Because they're all at work. No, they're I'm not. I was going to say, some of them work. There are none of them here, right? So, the gentleman that came first that was invited to speak, and you can give your name, please, and say what the interest is. Good afternoon, my name is John Parker, and I'm Secretary of Seat and Crew Boarding Club. Okay. Um, this parking situation, I'm not going to is going to be not only my members who come and play boards at Seat and Park, all the bowlers in the town who come and play maybe twice a week. Our situation is that we play on a Monday night, 6 to 8 30, a Tuesday night, 6 to 8 30, Friday afternoon, sorry, Thursday afternoon, 2 to 4, Friday afternoon, 2 to 4, and Saturday afternoon, 2 to half past 4. That's just the playing times. That doesn't take into consideration the time that you're down the green, set the green out, and also take all the scoreboard for Max and the Jacks back in the game. So it could be more than them at that time. Last year we had a lot of trouble with residents in Allendale Street and Farndale Road with regard to parking. People were turning up to play balls, six o'clock at night, quarter past six, parking in them streets, and yes, residents couldn't get parked there. So we ask all our members and even members of clubs in the town if they would use the car park. They are going to be, I mean I'm, I think now I'm speaking to all the boys in the town, that they are going to be hit with a parking charge. Because you don't just turn them and park your car, you've got your bowls, which is a bowls bag, you could have four woods in, heavy, where are they going to park? Are they going to walk maybe quarter a mile? To the green carry the heavy bag. Bear in mind that most of the bowlers in this town, I wouldn't say they're old age, but they are of a certain age. So they're not going to be fit. And the fact is that on a, on a Thursday and a Friday, it's the, vets, it's the vets will do it, and they are all over 60. Also, the fact that we play, and this is the Hartlepool Bowling Association, we also play teams from out of town. We have an East Coast Vets game where the Vets of Hartlepool Bowling Association play a team from the Collins as far as Bolton and see and Sunderland. So you, they come down and there's 24 of them plus the other people. Where are they going to find them? So I think on behalf of the boys in the town, especially our club, I think we're going to be penalised and we're not in favour. Just a couple of things. I, I fully accept your <coughs> comments and uh, recognise them. Um, if you have a blue badge, you're exempt up to three hours, yeah. um, so you wouldn't be paying anything. Seaton Carew Car Park, which is where the park car park, which is where the bowling green is, will still be free to be able to use the disc, so every light touch enforcement. And our main bowling club, which is actually at Mill House Leisure Centre, the users of that actually have to pay the same charges, so I think we're just trying to be free, fair across the board. I think you'd find you some of them do, because you actually use the bigger car. We use Hartlepool United Ground. Great. Great. Okay. So, if you want to say who you are and what your interest is. 
Hi, my name's Gemma Moore. Um, I'm a resident and the business of Sea and Crew. I set up a dog walking business in April last year. Now, if you introduce the charge, it's going to cost me £442 to park my van on a daily basis to walk not only my own dogs, but the dogs that I walk as part of the business. Now, I don't earn enough money to cover that parking fee. Now, I know before you say, well, the beach is out of action during that period, not the end of the beach that I walk, which is heading towards the Teesmouth area. £442 it's going to cost me on it that period of time, which I think is absolutely disgusting. <coughs> now, if I want to pay more in fuel to drive up the roads to Grimden, then brilliant. But when I walk the dogs, that know that area day in day out on the beach I believe that I should either be given a special permit or you should really look at this because it's not just my business there's several of us that use it and also the people that are the other businesses within the uh, village it's going to affect us quite bad so just please, please consider it that £442 pound. Okay. thank you yeah, I, I, I. I think it's Northgate Car Park at the bottom, isn't it? Yeah. The car park still available for it. I take on board your concerns, I will take that on board when we do the evaluation, that's the type of feedback we want. But as I say, it's an experimental order at the moment, so they're, they're free for this year, and we will take that on board, and that'll be fed in. Well, I, I know just, you, none yeah. of you believe that this is an experimental order, but it is. Can I just say, when you keep saying that they're free, one day will be free. Sorry, sorry, Chair. Right. We only so, need one permit, I think, right. for that business. Okay, so if do you want to sit back as a <coughs> is there anybody else? Because I can't just have this we do have other business to deal with as well. So if there are other people that want to come forward and speak. If you want to come forward and then I'm not taking any more speakers after that lady. Okay? My name is Norman Black. I'm a resident of St. Kirill. Um chose to retire to St. Kirill for the reason. And one of them was a leisure facility in the park. Now I just want to reinforce John's point about the park. My wife is treasurer of the Ladies Bulls Club in the State of Sea Club. Um, John mentioned that there were evening games on the Monday and the Tuesday. The ladies they play on a Tuesday and Wednesday. They have people come from Middlesbrough, Thornaby, Billingham, Thames, all of them. And they put on, just as we are trapped when we go to Bellingham or whether they go to Thornaby or whether they go to Middlebrook, they put on a tray afterwards. So those ladies don't use it for two hours, three hours, they then need four hours. Because you know what ladies are like, when they get a cup of tea and a sandwich and all the rest of it, it becomes a social thing. It's social activity. Now, as well as that, there's, I don't think there's anybody here from the Friends of the Park, but I think it will be affected the Friends of the Park and all the charges on that car park. And when you say you get half an hour free, um, I think about all the kids around there, or an hour free, you get all the kids around there on the swings. Those kids enjoy those swings for a long time. Their families with maybe three or four kids, and those three or four kids that are taken around there, they really enjoy the park, which you'll spend money on, the council spent money on. You'll spend money on one facility, or two facilities, the Bowling Green as well, and now we're going to charge people for using it. My rates are going up £70 this year or thereabouts. That's the minimum. If I pay for the four days that, that I go around, doing jobs in the clubhouse, which is looked after by the members, not by the council, although it's owned by the, 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 the council, we don't do repairs, I'll grant you that. But four hours is the minimum amount of time that we spend on there. John and I, we trim the greens and do our rest. The greens are cut by the council. But we're expected to help to maintain that place as well. And for all my going up £70 for the rates, anyone going around four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday afternoon, right over maybe a Friday afternoon, and Saturday, at 150 for, what is it, up to four hours? £1.50 for up to four hours. Up to four hours. That's a hundred and two hundred and then. £128 a week? No, sorry, £108 a, a, a year, over the 18 weeks. It's going up on my rates. I've already paid for the sale of the park. I think it's wrong. And I think you're doing the wrong thing. Take the initial cost for this in putting all your machines in. All your yellow lights that you're going to pay, you're going to pay. 
All your wardens that you're going to, you've just said you're going to have to pay more people to go there. I don't know how you're going to collect the money to, to get, them, get it back. It will not be for seven months. Once it's installed, the cost of getting rid of the stuff, you won't take it out. Okay. I object to it completely.